translation this morning. Going to bring to conclusion the message that we started about the storms, the shipwreck. Let us see how it ends. Acts 28 chapter. New Living Translation. Once we were shaped on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people of Ireland were very kind to us. It was cold, rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered the armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake driven out by the heat beat him on the hand. The people of Ireland saw it hanging from his hand, said to each other, a murderer. No doubt, though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook up the snake into the fire, and he was unharmed. The people waited on him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he was unharmed, they changed their minds and decided he was a god. From a murderer to a God. You can't depend on folks. Near the shore where we landed was one estate belonging to Publius. Now he was a Roman governor there. The chief official of the island. He welcomed us, treated us kindly for three days. As it happened, Publius' father was ill with fever and dysentery. Paul went in, prayed for him, laying his hand on him, he healed him. Then all other sick people on the island came and they were all healed. As a result, we were showed with honors and when the time came <clears throat> to sail, people supplied us with everything we would need for the trips. Let me read the last word, verse 30. For the next two years, Paul lived in Rome at his own expense. King James, New King James say he lived in a rented house. He welcomed all who visited him, boldly proclaiming kingdom of God teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ, and no one tried to stop him. Then probably his trial wind up in a jail, then he wrote the last letter of 2 Timothy. But let us bring to conclusion, go ahead and have your seats. Have you ever heard the phrase, from fire into Oh, at least somebody knows something. Let me ask again. From fire into the frying pan. What do we mean? Talk to the folks in Florida. Georgia. My Lord, a couple of weeks before they got hit with, with this hurricane. They brought a lot of rain lot of water. Haven't even recouped. Here comes the another one. Not so much of a rain, but a lot of wind. And I was watching on, on the news. They had one 
home on the beach survived the first hurricane. They had built it according to the codes. But guess what? The wind knocked it out. So let us look at the Acts 27 chapter. And again, this was not Paul's fault. Like we read in Acts 23 verse 11, God had promised Paul. I'm glad you are testifying here. But you will go to Rome and testify there. That was God's plan. All Paul was doing was being obedient. Brother Gary just read, if you be willing and obedient, that doesn't mean you won't have troubles. But God will fight our battles. Not only that, in the middle of the storm. Now watch it. That was not his own fault. He told them not to do certain things. But they did it anyway. They were looking for a comfortable place. Didn't work out. The storm came. They started throwing away all important cargoes. Didn't eat for 14 days. Not a sun, not a moon. Tired, weary, exhausted. But you know what you need? In a storm is the word of God. But some of us, let me play with you now. Some of us want a different word. Oh God, Lord, help me. Talk to me. Some of us want a different word of God when you are in a storm. But guess what? The word of the Lord came, an angel of the Lord came and say what? Say the same thing he had told him back then. Because storms are designed you to forget what God told you. It's the devil who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So the storms are designed to get you double-minded. Did he say that or did mm. So in the middle of the storm, God will remind what he done already told you. You don't believe me? Talk to Jonah. He didn't want to do what God told him to do. Wind up in a storm. And the word of the Lord came and told him what? Uh, since you're out of the storm, now go ahead. Do what I call you to do. God doesn't change his mind. What God had called you to do, you will do it no matter what happens. And he will supply the grace. Fourteen days, shipwrecked. Those who can swim, gone. Swim. Those who couldn't grab a piece of the wood or whatever, and you will make it. It is so dark, they wouldn't even know where they came. And that's where the chapter 28 starts. You think Paul would have said, Phew, that's over. Let me chill. Have you ever said that, my God? Can brother get a break here? Going from one to other, one to other, always. So they came to this island. 
Malta. There were some natives over there. It is cold, rainy, forty days of hunger. But Bible says they were very helpful to them. They don't know who these people are. They just show that they had a shipwreck. They said, come, come, you all, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And they started a fire to warm them. And let me talk about this Paul. He was a prisoner, but then he became a captain. But he's still a leader. He saw people cold, rain, bringing the wood. So he's not sitting there saying, uh, uh, what, 276 of us, you all go on, bring some wood here. No, he joined them. Leading by example. So he goes over there. And get some wood out. And as soon as he, he grabs the wood, a very poisonous snake. They say it was the deadliest on that island. And it bites his hand. Now when a snake bites, it's all right. Let me teach you something about snakes. So when he bites, it's fine. But what will happen? It will just raise his head, put his fang inside. So it's just like doctor taking that shot he gave you. He just pushes it inside. So he, he beat him, he wrapped himself, and pushed all the poison inside and wrap him around so he can get all the poison. So now, all these people are watching. And you know, listen to me, people always have opinions. You worried about people, you will not obey God. You do what God has called you to do. Paul, you will go to Rome. The native knew about the snake. He said, okay. Mm -hmm. And they made up their mind. This must be murderer. Don't know. Listen to me. They don't know nothing about Paul. Paul don't know nothing about you. They just met you. But they know everything about you. They start talking. Isn't that interesting? They don't talk to you. They talk to everybody else. Did you hear me what I just said? They didn't ask, hey, Paul, is you a murderer? Uh-uh. They start talking about myself. Uh-uh. He, guess what? He must be. He didn't say might be. He must be a murderer. He said, you survived the shipwreck, but you know, Justice always catches up with you. Let us see now what happens. We don't know how long. They just kept on looking, kept on looking. Man, don't look like anything happening. Don't you know? He don't know about our snake, but we know. Just, just give it a few more minutes. It's going to start swelling. And they kept on looking. Nothing happened. 
no swelling. And this is what Paul did. He saw the snake. The fire is going on. He just shook it. No, 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 no. He had wrapped him so much, he <coughs> kicked out. Some of you need to shake something out of your life. My God, it has wrapped you around you, around you, around you, around you, trying to choke life out of you. Everybody waiting for you to die. Everybody pass a judgment. So this is what I'm saying. From fire into fighting. Paul, my God, I just survived this. Shipwreck. Now, you're going to treat a brother like this? He could have said that, look, this is not my idea. It is your idea for me to go to Rome. You didn't tell me how I'm is going to Rome. Isn't that interesting? He's Alpha, Omega, beginning and the ending. But he don't give you no detail how is you going to go from point A to point B. That's where faith comes in. That's where trust comes inside. Would you say my times are in the hands of the Lord? My footsteps are order of the Lord? He shook the snake in the fire. And he's standing there. And so these people now say, whoa, he must be God. This is not the first time Paul has gone through like this before. Remember there was another time uh, he met Barnabas? You must be God. Because we know when this snake's by, you go on, you go on, but there is something different about you. So the word comes to the governor. This man, there was a shipwreck. Well, I'm glad you all helped them. That's what we are. We are country people. We help the strangers. Did you all feed them? Yes. Did you build a fire for them? Yes. Let me tell you, governor, what happened? Because a snake came and beat him, and we thought he was going to die, but he survived. Where is he? Bring him in my palace. I wish God would have easy way to bring me to palace. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. But God never tell you how he's going to bring you to head. We always preach from, from prison to palace. And I guarantee all the students, I know the story. You're going to tell me about Joseph. No, I'm not. Since you already know that story, let me tell you this story. A prisoner, Paul, obeying God, God's way, guess what? He winds up in the palace. Broke. Slave. Soldiers are all around. He said, come on in. Wow. From a shipwreck to your palace. You can look up and say, is this real? Folks, Keep obeying God. He will surprise. You will have to pinch yourself. Is this real? I was broke. I was broke. I was 
40 days I didn't eat and now you, you mean to tell me I can eat anything? Not for one day, for three months in a palace. Isn't that interesting? Huh? Because it was not now season, it was not a season for the sheep to be floating during the time of winter. They need a break. And how to have a break when it don't cost you nothing. Oh, Lord God. And what you all call it, Airbnb, whatever it is, you all call it whatever. Uh -huh, some of you know. He didn't even make a reservation. Wind up in a palace. Maybe they are talking. Paul, man, there's something about you. It's not me. It's not me. It's God. In him we live and move and have our being. Now the governor is watching, listening. Talking about the resurrection power of the living God, Jesus Christ. He said, you, you mean to tell me the snake bit you? No, 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 no. Jesus Christ said in the gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter, and they pick up any deadly snake, it will not hurt them. Did you hear what Jesus said? Say, that scripture just fulfilled. And by the way, that's not the end. He also said, and they said, lay hands on the sick. And they said, recover. stop it, Paul. Say what? Snakes will not hurt you. And they will lay hands on the sick and they recover. Governor, I said it. Let me say it again. My Lord said, they said lay hands on the sick. And they said recover. Time out, Paul. See that bedroom? Yeah. What about it? That's my dad's bedroom. What's up there? He is sick. He's about to die. Do you believe? Paul said, let's just go. Paul went over there. Listen to me. And laid hands on this daddy. And the Bible says, he was made whole immediately. A slave. Shipwreck. 14 days of hell he went through. Cold. Snake beat. But now he's in a palace and he's running the show. Like I always say, go to any joint and walk like you own the joint. Which you do. Walk in your authority. He said, wait a minute. My daddy is made whole. He said, yeah. Messengers, come on. He called the messengers. Go throughout the island. Bring anyone that is sick. Let us see what happens. Remember the Bible says in Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, the fourth chapter, and the Bible says, and there was an evening time, and they brought all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, and Jesus healed them all. Jesus said, and these signs shall follow them, believe. He said, the works that I do, even greater works than these you shall do. Paul knew that scripture. And Bible says, when the Evening came. They brought all. And they were all made whole. Folks, when are we going to forget about our own sorrows? And our trouble. And be a blessing to someone else. One miracle can turn the whole nation, whole city around. 
Philip went down to Samaria. And the Bible said that was a great joy. Folks, we are so wrapped up in us and us and my prayers. Why don't we get so full of the Holy Ghost that we look forward for opportunity for God to show himself strong and mighty on his behalf? So Paul is there enjoying himself. Stayed in a palace for three months. It's very important to know. Three months. Winter is over. It's about springtime. It's time to travel. And Bible took time to write. A cruise liner called Alexandria. Oh, look at me, y'all. Come on, my friend. Come on, my friend. You always wanted a cruise, but you didn't have money. It's not a sheep for the slaves no more. And verse 10, let me, let me read that verse again. Verse 10, 28 and 10. As a result, we were showered with honors when the time came to sell. People supplied us with everything we would need for the tree. All it says is this. They loaded us with the finest. Oh, Lord, God, God, Lord, all my. I don't know about you folks. How many years we have heard? Come on, I need somebody to hook up with me. I'm about to say something. How many times we have heard the wealth Oh, Lord, come on, come on, buckle up, buckle up, buckle up. Wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous, and the righteous shall inherit it. This is what happened, but how did the righteous inherit it? He inherited by obeying the word of God. The snakes will bite you, but it will not hurt you. You lay hands on the sea, and, and you know what is our problem? Oh, bring it here close. You know why the wealth is not transferred so much? Because we ain't doing a jack. We're sitting in the church, dwelling of a tomb. Ain't that God good? Huh? We ain't doing nothing. That's why wealth is sitting there, ain't moving. I'm a hoping and praying. I'm hoping and praying. And the wicked is getting wealthier and wealthier. And you're getting poorer and poorer. And you shan't die all day long speaking in tongue. Ain't nothing happening. It's time for you to take a stand on the word of God. Finest clothes. I'm going to prove it to you. They loaded him. I'm going to quit early today so I can have my regular lunch time. So Coco can have his 10 minutes. <laughs> Come on, folks. They know I, 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 I'm a man. I'm a boom, boom, boom. Time, 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 time. So listen to this. They loaded him with everything that they needed for the journey. And I believe they gave him some money. How do I know? You just landed in a room. And all the friends, Bible says, and all the believers came to see Paul coming to Rome. And they're saying, this is slave ship. 
this grain sheep, no, we ain't there, we ain't there. And all of a sudden, tong, that big old bugle goes over there, and here comes the Alexandria. Ain't that a nice cruise ship? Yeah. Uh, who is on the deck? Paul with his three-piece suit? Or oh, not? Uh, he, he got his sunglasses. Uh, I mean, he loaded there. Do look like Paul. It is Paul. You will reach your destiny in a grand style. Yes. Don't you ever say that you all pray for me. I'll make it to my destiny. That's a lie from hell. I'm going to make to my destiny in a grand style, folks. He is, oh God, he is not coming for a broke church. He's coming for a glorious church, a victorious church, without wrinkle, without blame. He is. Do you think the creator of heaven and earth, the Lord Almighty God, he is going to come for his bride that is raggedy? When a bride is about to get married, my God, she buys the best of church. And I ain't talking about everybody else. I'm talking about me, the church. You, the church. I am telling you, folks, huh? we will get out of here. And the way the world is going, I will go about in a grand style. Yeah. But some of you, man... My bill is up to this high. I hope he comes so I don't have to pay. <laughs> That's a wrong attitude. That's a wrong attitude. Huh? Why don't you ask God to pay all your bills? You got something left over to bless everybody else? That's how we're going to go. And Bible says, and he... He landed there. And Paul say, y'all, uh, I ain't got much time because my trial will start. When? We don't know. A couple of years, maybe, whatever. Uh, I need a nice house. You need a house. Man, I just got a taste of the best in a Malta. Listen to me. He wind up in a room, watch it, in a rented house. The living room was so big, he hold a leadership meeting in the living room. And here you are, like, you give me one bedroom, I'll be all right. That's a stinking thinking. And guess what? Who paid for two years? Their governor in Malta had loaded him with so much, he stayed there for two years, fully loaded, fully loaded, and preaching the kingdom of God. I'm here to tell you, folks, I'm about to close. You are getting closer to your destiny. Don't pray, Lord, I pray you will give Pastor Stephen the strength. Uh-uh. Go ahead and stand up. Say, I am, I am going, going to finish, to finish my rest. You don't believe me? Paul said, for I have finished my course. I ran my race. I have kept the faith for now onwards. He's going to reward me. Not only me, but all those who will obey. 
Be willing. Be obedient. And my last word. It will all end in his praise. Amen. Thank you.